Okay, cool. Um, so what we're going to be looking at this uh, set of tutorials is how do you make a kind of uh, a loop board, sound board, I don't know what you really would call this, um, in, in Pygame and Python. This is aimed at beginner coders, um, so if you're like a, a really advanced coder uh, and making amazing games in Pygame, uh, it's probably not for you, to be honest with you. Um, so with that in mind, um, let's see what you are going to build. So here I've got some uh, kind of lovely squares. I can click on these squares. And what will happen is we'll start playing uh, a loop. Okay, so it's got a little sound loop going and I can add some melody to go with it. And then I can toggle them on and off. Each one of these is different. So I've got my red ones as drums. And then I've got different melodies which you can put in there as well. So the idea is kind of making one of those um, kind of almost almost like an interactive DJ set where you can like click on the different loops and play some cool things. So it's very primitive, but it's a, it should be nice fun to make. So let's get started with it. That's the plan. That's what we're going to do. First of all, in order to get this working, um, we need to create a folder to put our work into. And inside that folder, you want to create a second folder which you're going to call sounds. And in there, you're going to um, put all the kind of um, um, sounds we can use in our loops. Okay, so I've downloaded these off the internet. They're all free. Um, all I've done is rename them a little bit. So you can download them. Uh, just do Google for free uh, free sound loops. Uh, I found if you put .zip in there as well in the search, you tend to find them a bit better. So I've got some sounds in my uh, folder already. Okay, cool stuff. So. Now I've got my blank um, Python file, so I'm going to create a new file um, and save it. And I'm going to save this into my project folder. I'm going to call it something different. Uh, so let's call this loop boards example. So we're going to get um, our initial Pi game screen, uh, screen? screen loaded. So how do we do that? Well, I'm going to first import the library. Okay, now I know some people like to um, just import Pygame um, and just put Pygame in front of everything. I prefer just to do it this way for now. And then the first thing we always have to do when we are using Pygame is initialize the Pygame libraries. Okay, because we are going to be using sounds, um, we also need to use um, this line of code here, which is um, mixer.init. Um, I've always used that in the past. Um, I don't know if it will work without it. Um, I'm not going to take the chance. I'm just going to do it and use it. Um, then I'm going to use two variables. And this is going to define how big my uh, window is going to be. Okay, so I've got 800 by 800, which is going to be kind of a nice square shape. Okay, obviously, if you want to make that bigger or smaller, depending on your monitor size or depending on how many loops you want to put in there, that's obviously up to you. Okay, I'm then going to, using the Pygame syntax, Create a screen. Now, what this screen does is allow me to draw, uh, or you have something to draw to. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use to draw. Um, set mode basically will say, well, what mode do I want to be in? How big the window is going to be? And you can see here I've got uh, my width and height variables. Okay, using these two values here. They are also. I don't know if you can see this enclosed in the extra set brackets. Now, those may extra set brackets you might want to kind of like just say leave out, but please keep them because this here in Python is known as a tuple. Okay, so it's like I don't know. Maybe I create my tuple like this. Okay, so it's a bit for those you know what an array is. It's a bit like an array, just it's mutable. That means you can't change the values in it. Um, and Pygame uses tuples a lot. Okay, so you'll get used to having lots of double brackets uh, flying around. Okay, so that's my screen created. Next thing I need to do is have a variable which I'm going to use to control whether the game is running or not. Okay, so I've got exit program equals false. When exit program comes true, I want my program to end. Okay, I then need what we call the game loop. So the game loop is very simple, it is just a while loop. And inside my while loop, I'm going to put all my kind of uh, keyboard access, my mouse access stuff, more my event handling is what it's called formally, um, all the kind of moving around if it was a game, or my um, uh, displaying my drawing in this example. So now that I've got that, I want to put an event loop in. So what the event loop does 
is it allows me to deal with events that happen on the computer. So these will be things such as I've clicked a, a, a something on the screen. I, I've used my mouse. Uh, I might have closed the program down. I might have entered something on the keyboard. So these are different events that can happen. So Pygame is an event-driven um, paradigm. What that essentially means is it tends to wait for something to happen uh, from the user before we all then uh, change. Okay, so we have to be able to handle keyboard events, mouse events. And the example here is the quit event. So what the quit event is, is when you close the window, uh, it will run this uh, bit of code. So what it says very simply is exit program equals true. So what will happen is this loop will go on forever until I press quit. Exit program comes true, which means this condition no longer is true. And then for it will end. Now, for those of you a bit more of a purist, we could obviously do that. You know, it will do the exact same thing. Uh, I'm just going to keep it simple uh, for my, all my newbie coders out there. So, the next thing I want to do is I want to just fill the screen as a specific color. Now, um, here I've got a fill color. So, screen.fill. Remember, screen is the screen I want to draw to. Fill means fill the whole screen. Okay. And these numbers here are the color. Okay, and again, notice it's a tuple with the double brackets, and the colors uh, come in red, green, and blue. All right, um, I then have this last line of code here, which is display.flip. And what display.flip will do is basically get things drawing. So if I run this program now, oops, if I run this, pro if I run this program, uh, what will happen is I'll get a lovely black square with nothing in it. Okay, if I press the close button, you see it closes properly. Um, if I change these numbers and run it again, you'll see I'll get a different colored background. Okay, so I've now got a red background. And obviously I can change the numbers to be whatever I want to. Um, if you're using Genie, there is a color picker. So if I, I don't want to uh, use a, uh, a sexy kind of yellow color, um, I can use these numbers and just simply enter them in. So 238, C34, and uh, what's that one? 99. And then I can run my program again. And oops, what have I done? Oh, didn't mean to do that. Um, and I run my program again. I should get a lovely, sexy uh, yellow. Okay, obviously, every movie board, uh, sorry, soundboard, loop board, whatever it's called, needs a sexy yellow uh, background. Okay, so obviously, feel free to change the color to be whatever you want to. And in the next uh, lesson we're going to be looking at how to make some of those buttons appear.